Uh, hi everybody, my name is Ijaz. Uh, I'm one of the uh, the first time MVP. Um, thanks for the community. Thank you to the whole community for all the support. Uh, I'm a developer and architect uh, in a company called Advania UK. Uh, and here is my um, LinkedIn and Twitter or the X account. Please get in touch if you have any question. Uh, so today we're looking into a topic of building a custom Copilot plugin. Uh, and uh, and uh, we'll see how we can use the SharePoint list as a backend uh, and what's involved. We'll look into the presentation, a few slides, and we can look at the code as well and the demo. Uh, any question, just put into the chat. I'll try to answer. So before we look into um, plugin, building the plugin, we need to kind of in, need to know where the plugin sits. So they are part of the Copilot extension family. Now we call it Copilot extensions uh, umbrella. So they, um, we have a connectors as a Microsoft Graph connectors. We have a co uh, plugins and we also have our, um, your Copilot comes under this umbrella as well. So this is what we're looking at today is the plugin here under the Copilot extension. So now, if you go further deep dive into the plugin, uh, there are different types of plugins. Uh, we have a message extension plugin, uh, we have an API plugin, and then you have a Copilot Studio based plugin. So today we are looking on this uh, part of the world, which is the message extension based plugin. Now, what we are building today, we're building a, a Microsoft Copilot product catalog plugin. So basically, what we have here is uh, we have a SharePoint list and the backend uh, where um, I can show you the backend quickly. So um, probably not. The one. So you can see here, this is the product and services. So most of the, um, uh, uh, you know, the IT provider or solution provider, uh, they they have their own product and services they offer. So they have a little catalog. So what's the product name they offer, description, revenue type, and service area, service group. So, I mean, these are the just examples, the sample data which I've generated using the AI, but, uh, you know, the real data will be different, but you get an idea like every company uh, who provides services, they have some sort of catalog, like we provide these services. So I take that idea and created a SharePoint list with the sample data. Now, so if I, and if I go back to the slide, Sorry. So now what basically is going to help is going to help. We have a centralized data. Uh, we, we're going to search this backend data with the natural language search. So you don't have to kind of a, have some filter on the UI you have to select, but you can just simply ask question using the natural language. Uh, it will boost productivity uh, because you don't know what uh, kind of, a, you don't need to know exactly um, what you want to ask, you're asking natural language question, and then the data will come straight into your teams where you are, uh, so you don't have to go to shape and list and filter and so for searching the data. Then seamless team integration um, as a key features. So if I go into next, and what what's the uh, in terms of the architecture of the app, what's the it look like? So. Um, so where we are is uh, if you if you look at this site, so this is the team's client, user ask a question, uh, and what happened is it goes to um, product and services plugin, uh, and then from there, uh, there is a something magic happened behind the scene, which is a, a user prompt uh, converting in, converted into automatically into in, uh, transformed the intent. Uh, the user intent, like what he wanted to ask, and that basically give you some query parameters, and then you can use that query parameter and pass that information to your backend. So in my case, I've used the Azure function, uh, which is to taking those um, user prompt into the query parameter and then taking those query parameter and via the Azure function, I'm calling the SharePoint list. And then from there on, I'm sending this r r data back to the copilot and then your Teams app. Teams client. So 
before we start, what we need to build this plugin, Copilot plugin, if you haven't tried it already. You, um, so I've used the Visual Studio Code, so you need Node.js Node, 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 Node 18, which I've used. Uh, Visual Studio Code, you need Teams Toolkit, uh, Microsoft Account, of course, um, and then you need a Microsoft Copilot license. Uh, Shape and list with sample data, and then Azure Function app uh, for the backend. Now, this backend could be anything. In, in, for the simplicity, I use Azure Function app uh, and the Shape and list as a backend. So that could be anything. Okay, so let's go and look at the demo and look what it looks like. Uh, so I've go to this way. I did some searches before. So if let me just say. Um, now, before I do that, uh, what I want to show you the picture first. So when we first um, uh, add an app, added this plugin, uh, let me share my. So we see, um, so so I got everything ready for you, so I don't have to wait. So that's why I took a screenshot. So we get this as a um, prompt, like this is my uh, app, which is a messaging extension. So one thing I would want to uh, uh, point it is the description because that is really key in uh, in the uh, if 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 you want your um, copilot to use your plugin so make sure uh, write the detail um, uh, description about your plugin what it does what is actually is exactly going to search give some example you can see i have some example as well so write the detailed description uh, uh, then the copilot would know uh, uh, from you know, your, it needs to call your plugin based on your prompt. So there is a whole, whole um, new. Uh, there's a lot of documentation around how to uh, uh, write the description for the Copilot plugin. So please check that out. Now we clicked in Add, so we added, and then what you have to do is click on this little icon on the bottom right. Click on Plugin, and then you enable your plugin. At the moment, is enabled. Uh, uh, product catalog plugin is enabled and I can go and add some. Uh, so let's say I can see get, get all uh, product related to Power BI. So if I go and search this. So now at the moment what's happening here is is communicate is found out it needs to use our plugin, which is the my plugin. So I didn't mention in my prompt that use my plugin. I just said I need a old product, even though I have enabled. So might be you have more than one enabled. So uh, plugin. So I, I just asked use this. Give me the product related to Power BI. It knows from there my um, uh, uh, it, it needs to go and call my plugin, and then uh, he extracted the query parameters which he needs to extract based on this uh, intent intent and then pass to my azure function backend and then azure function did the job of bringing the data back to the copilot so another thing you'd see here is um, uh, the little like uh, numbers so one two three four five uh, so what should basically this is where um, adaptive card play into play so if i move my mouse on the one and this is the uh, the data coming from uh, this is uh, Showing this data as in adaptive card, so um, and you can also see has also has a related document as well because I have a tool list uh, which uh, looked up to the related document as well. Uh, so when I move this one, so if this is um, the UI is in building with custom adaptive card, so you can build use adaptive card to build custom UI. Right in the same way, and if I scroll down, you'd see if you are in the developer mode, I think you. Uh, if one dash or two dash, you put developer and dash on, and it will uh, it turn on the developer mode, and then you can see uh, how is finding and it first enable the plugin. How is uh, uh, matching with your which function is matching, which is defined in your manifest file, and then you're executing, and then what was the result of that execution? And you can see we got the 200 and we got the result back. So it can see uh, how is basically based on your prompt. Uh, is selecting your uh, product, um, plugin or not plugin. That's the benefit of the de uh, developer mode on. Right, so that's how it worked. Uh, you can uh, 
so far, uh, and I can just go and do one more prompt. Probably can show here. I said, show me all product where revenue type is training services. So you can see here is now bring me different uh, result back, which is where the revenue type revenue type column is training service, which is this one. So I, currently, I'm using like a four or five different um, parameters based on the columns. Uh, product name, description, revenue type, or service area kind of thing. But you, you know, you can build as many. Uh, I think we can build like five or six. I don't remember exactly how many, but we can have a multiple parameters uh, in in manifest for the Copilot plugin. Right. So um, now that's uh, how it works from the UI side of thing. So if let's go back to the code and how it works from uh, how uh, what we need to do from the code point point of view. Uh, so quickly, um, first of all, um, uh, we need to prepare the manifest, which is most important. So we go to app, package, manifest file. Um, so again, this uh, description, short description, full description, very important, right? Detailed description uh, and um, uh, with the example. So uh, it, it will help Copilot to find your plugin and call your method. So then, here is messaging extension, usual stuff. Uh, but then here, because we can have a multiple parameters now, so you can see have defined uh, the product name as a one of the parameter, and then description about, and there's a semantic description as well. I think it's uh, if the um, description is uh, semantic description is not available, then it will rely on the description. So I normally put the semantic description as well. Specifically, I want uh, so. Um, same as another parameter I've used is product description, revenue type, service area, service area owner. So one, two, three, four, five. So what happening is when you type something, it it can uh, it's basically your uh, convert your intent convert into any of these parameters. So my uh, this is your revenue type. This is the product description or service area uh, from uh, or the service area. So I can use um, and I'm using those parameters to search against my SharePoint list. Uh, there's nothing else here apart from that. And then it's just the normal. Uh, if I go to service my app, so here uh, the magic is happen when you uh, what we after you hit enter after you uh, send the query, uh, we then extract the pro, um, parameters which has already been given to us like a uh, for product name that's what user is asking for the description or revenue type this is what user is asking for revenue type so it's, i'd get all the parameters and then pass this parameter to my azure function which is the azure function which is the in the in my uh, environment variable uh, then i'm just uh, once the result get the result back and i'm just using my adaptive card which is uh, product adaptive card. So that's what adaptive card, which you saw earlier. So that is on that side. And then in the back end with the API, um, I have Azure function. Um, so I don't want to go too much into detail, like, you know, uh, simple Azure function uh, with PNPJS, uh, PNP uh, core uh, .NET uh, setup. So, so you can see here how we set the authentication, usual stuff. But what I want to show you in the SharePoint service, so here I'm building the camel query. So based on um, my uh, parameters, I'm, I'm building that camel query and searching the SharePoint list and bringing the data back. So um, so going back to my, uh, my presentation, so at the end, uh, I have uh, so this few references. So please check out. There's a dev sample already. Uh, sample has been submitted. So it's available, and that's a blog post related, which I wrote about this one. So please check out. That's all for me. Mm -hmm.